sort of circular thing we're wanting you to anticipate here with us. We want you to understand that unless you're happy, you can't be happy. <laughs> and that might be hard to hear because it seems sort of stupid. <laughs> but if you'll just play that in your mind for a little while, if I want to be happy, I've got to be happy. If I, if I want to be happy, I've got to be happy because, you see, if you say... If I want to be happy, I need a million dollars in the bank. There might be a little lag time. <laughs> Maybe a little. I can't be happy till my lover comes to me. Well, there might be a little lag time. But if you get it into the context of something that you can do something about, I can't be happy until I'm happy. Well, I could be happy if I would try just a little bit. I could be happier. I sure could be happier. I sure could. I have the ability to focus myself into feeling better. And we so want you to understand, ah, you are vibrational beings, and the way you feel are your vibrational indicators. And as vibrational beings, you are broadcasting a signal that law of attraction is responding to. So if the signal that you are broadcasting is giving you a happy feedback, then that means you're broadcasting a signal that's being answered by signals that will eventually bring you the manifestation that will make you happy. But if you wait until you've received the manifestation in order to be happy, then you hold yourself in a holding pattern and the good stuff doesn't come. And it could be here today. Everything that you want, every single thing, everything that you or anyone wants or has ever wanted or ever will want, Everything that you want is because you think you will feel happier in the having of it. And if you could show yourself that you could feel happier right here and now, even without the manifestation, if you have the capacity to generate a vibration that in generating the vibration produces a relationship between the vibration that's source within you is generating. Did you catch all that? <laughs> we'll back up and give that to you again. Source is always broadcasting a signal, and you are always a receiver of that signal, and you are always broadcasting a signal. And those two signals are making music. Sometimes it sounds good, sometimes it sounds bad. And so that vibration, there's a discord in the vibration or a harmony in the vibration. There's an allowing in the vibration or a resistance in the vibration. And your emotions are your indicator of all of that. So if you decide that you're going to be aware of what music you're playing, and if you care about the happy music playing within you, then that means you care about what you're thinking, and therefore you begin to gain control of your thoughts, and therefore of your vibrational broadcast, and therefore of your point of attraction, and therefore of everything that comes back to you. You see how it works? But if you're paying no mind to how you feel, if you've got your sights only set upon what you want, and if what you want hasn't come, and even worse, it hasn't been coming, so now you're lonely, or you're defeated, or you're afraid. Those emotions, that sad playing music, those emotions are your indicator that you're offering signals and you're not paying any attention to the signals that you're offering, and that matters really, really a lot. In fact, that's the only thing that matters. Because the only thing that has anything to do with you, let's put this in a really blunt place. <laughs> the only thing that has anything to do with what's coming to you is what you're broadcasting. That's all. Your point of attraction is completely about what you're thinking about. Now we could say, and how you feel about what you're thinking about, but those are only indicators. It really is about what you're thinking about. So if we can convince you that you want to be happy in order to be happy, meaning you want to be happy in order to broadcast a signal, in order to have law of attraction respond to the signal, in order to bring a sequence of events and circumstances and things into your experience that once they come into your view where you can be, where they will be revealed to you. Ah, oh, that sounds mysterious. <laughs> what do you mean, revealed? Well, everything's vibrational. And some of you are good... <sighs> at revealing to yourself the content of the vibration earlier than others. Hmm. 
We like how that sounded. Some of you have to wait till there's a full-blown manifestation so that you can translate it through your eyes and ears and nose and t- fingertips and tongue. In other words, till you lick it, you don't believe it. <laughs> but some of you have the ability to discern vibrational content, to experience the revelation, to reveal to yourselves the vibrational content before you have to see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it. Some of you are able to feel it emotionally. And that's what we want you to start reaching for because if you will care about the discovery of what you want emotionally, which only means if it can make you happy before it's in your garage, if the idea of it makes you happy, if the anticipation of it makes you happy, if you have the ability to move your thoughts around in ways that you can feel joy in the absence of manifestation, not in the absence of your ability to discern vibration, but in the absence of manifestation, now you've got it figured out. Now you're happy before you have a reason to be happy if the reason to be happy was the manifestation. So now something's just shifted a little bit. Maybe your reason to be happy doesn't have to be the manifestation. Maybe your reason to be happy can be your alignment with source. So over time, we've been talking to you in lots of different ways, offering lots of different analogies, wanting to get your attention about this. And we say to you that you are the creator of your own experience. And you said, yay, ooh. (laughs) You liked it for that long. You liked it for the split second that it meant somebody else isn't the boss of you. But in the moment that you accepted the responsibility for being the creator of your own experience, most of you started freaking out just a little bit. Well, what does that mean? I'm the creator of my own experience. That can't possibly be true because there are things in my experience that I don't want and there are things not in my experience that I do want. So clearly there's something else going on. I'm not the creator of my experience. And we say, yes, you are. You're just not the wise, deliberate creator of your experience. You're just not the intuitive knowing creator of your experience. You're the creator of your experience by default, which means you're running around, looking at things, looking at things wanted, looking at things not wanted, offering vibration all over the place, broadcasting signals, having no idea of the signal that you're broadcasting, justifying every single one of them because that was a really bad person who did a really bad thing to me, and I'm perfectly... So... You are the creator of your own experience, we said to you. So after a while, you settled into that, all right. All right. So how can I be the creator of my experience? We say, well, you have to understand that there are these laws, specifically the law of attraction, that is always in action. It's always responding. It responds to everything. And it brings together those things that are like. And so you are the creator of your own experience, meaning you are the attractor of your own experience, meaning you are the broadcaster of a signal constantly that is being answered. And the way your life is playing out is in response to what you've been broadcasting. And then we began explaining to you that the contrast that you think you don't like, even today, some of you have been around a long time and you still don't like contrast. (laughs) And yet contrast is your best friend. It is all of our best friends because it is necessary in order for the new idea to be created, for the new idea to be considered, for the new idea to hatch within us. So the contrast helps you know what you don't want, which helps you to know what you do want. And you say, big deal. Knowing what I do want, knowing what I don't want, doesn't get me any closer to getting what I do want. It just helps me know what I don't want and know what I do want. And we say, but if you understood that every time you have that deciphering thing happen within you, that there is a rocket of desire that is launched, and you say, big deal. I've launched a rocket of desire, but it's elusive. And we say, doesn't have to be. You say, but it is. We say, it doesn't have to be. You've launched a rocket of desire, which is held in a holding pattern, which we are calling your vortex of creation. You say, sounds all right, but where is it? I can't see it. And we say, we can see it. And you say, well, we're glad you can see it, Abraham, but we can't see it. So, You're telling me that everything that I want is in this vibrational vortex. We say yes, and it gets better. Law of attraction is calling all things that are a vibrational match to it. So it is expanding and becoming more and more exactly what you are wanting. And further, your inner being, oh yeah, that other part of me that I can't see. Yeah, your inner being, your inner being, the non-physical part of you, 
stands in that vortex, in that vortex where I can't see anything, yes, in that vortex, in that vortex, the vibrational version of everything that you want. And again, you say to us, we've been listening to you for a long time. You think we don't hear everything you say. We hear everything you say. You complain a lot. (laughs) My vortex is full of all that I've become. Well, how, how do I see it like you see it? How do I know it like, like you know it, Abraham? We say, you have to prepare yourself to understand it vibrationally first which means you have to let it reveal itself to you emotionally first. You got to feel it. You got to feel happy about it. You got to feel eager about it. You got to feel believing of it. You got to feel certain of it. You got to feel trusting of it. You've got to, you've got to believe in the process that is causing your expansion. But even more, you've got to believe in your ability to use your emotional guidance system to help you tune to the frequencies that allow what's in your vortex to reveal itself to you. Now, those aren't the most accurate words. It's not about what's there revealing itself to you. It's about you preparing yourself to see it. It's about you preparing the frequency of yourself so that you can see it. Now, we know this has got to sound strange to somebody that's just listening in to us because you've got this reality going on and you're so good at deciphering it through your physical senses that you don't even know you're doing it. You don't know that you are a vibrational interpreter, that what you see is vibrational interpretation and what you hear is vibrational interpretation of vibration, of energy, of frequency. Your fingertips are interpreting vibration. That's why you feel and smell and taste. But your emotions interpret too. Your emotions interpret in a more sophisticated, a more finely tuned way than your nose. Even among your physical senses, you know your dog hears and smells things that you can't. And and in the smelling department, it's a good thing. (laughs) So even among the physical beings, you know that you vary in your ability to translate vibration. You know you see differently and hear differently and smell differently. And so we want you to focus with us today because this is the emphasis that you are ready to hear. We want you to figure out how to prepare yourselves to receive what you have been putting and are continually putting into your vortex. So we would like you, we know the vortex was never an analogy that was very pleasing to you because we said everything you want's in there, just go in there with it. And you said, I'd like to go, but how do I get get in there? The absence of what I want is apparently keeping me out. And so now we're wanting to explain to you that Creation is about attraction, and attraction is about rendezvousing. When we say you create your own reality, we don't mean you look out into the world and you see something you want, and then you go after it, and you grab it, and you bring it home and keep it. We don't mean creating like that. We mean establishing a vibrational pattern that keeps what you want coming to you on a continual basis, not just occasionally, not just with peak experiences, but constant flowing, constant steady flowing, constant steady revelation of the good life that you are supposed to live, of the good life that you've carved out through contrast, of the good life that you've been sifting and sorting and asking for, of the good life that you have vibrationally chosen, but may in some cases not be vibrationally allowing or receiving. So now we began talking about the grid. The grid meaning your point of attraction. It's where you stand. It's what you're doing vibrationally. It's how you feel emotionally. It's your point of attraction. But mostly, as far as it relates to something that you can do something about, it means how do I feel right here and now? So today we want to talk, in the hours that we are playing together, we want to talk about how you might... Do a better job, if you want to, of preparing your vibrational grid for the receiving of what's in your vortex. Because there is a manifestational point. There's a point where something that was a good idea and something that you're very excited about and something that you want and something that you've been calling future flows into your experience where you can see it, where you can experience it, where you can hear it, where you can smell it and taste it and touch it, you see. There is this manifestational point where what you've created vibrationally and what has been tended for in your vortex flows into your experience. And it's happening for you all day, every day. You are living in a manifested world.